What? Pugna? Pugna. Uh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be actually, good on LC as well against the Skywrath Mage. It's an it's an okay it's an okay Pugna game. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh against Sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that Sky is going to be an issue here because it's the support. You don't really want to counter their one support here. It's more about countering cores. Um, and Pugna is actually pretty countered by Brewmaster, but it's not even that good against Sniper either, I would say. Uh, it's. I don't think it's happening. But. Oh, no, no Pugna. <laughs> Sorry, Someday dude. Someday there's going to be a Pugna and you are going to just I just freak planted, out. I planted the seed in you so that one goes to the next person, the next person, and the day that Pugna shows up, everyone's going to be like, ah. Uh, I'm going to be making a video and I'm going to talk about Pugna more. I'm, yep. just, I'm gonna make a Pugna video. We're gonna week. get it in the trend without people even knowing it. They're gonna just start picking up. So, listen, I have been Possible. talking with some good support players, and they're all about it. Sunken is a great support. any player. He's yeah. Sunken's the number one or number two Pugna player on Dota buff. He okay. plays as support. You can check his recent history. He's done really? it. Been chatting with Loom Dunn. He plays it a lot recently. He's all about it. Huh. We don't have to keep all going right. in the Pugna. I mean, life drain can be used once you hit six. It's pretty cool. Like I agree with that. I would say like we'll earn, see. earn we'll level see. I'm six. Just saying, so you can do some good I'm things. I'm just saying he'll creep on us, man. He's getting those buffs okay. over and over and over again. Eventually, <sighs> hey, he's gonna sneak into the draft. And I'm just saying it, the, it doesn't have to be in that core position. Give that guy an armor buff. He's gonna be a little scary. <sighs> maybe, yeah. maybe not strength yeah. buff. Yeah, his his strength buffs. Yeah, he could use life, but he's well, got great move speed. He's like, he's really just behind Skyrath Mage. Yeah. yeah, as far as speed goes, get some tranquils and a soul ring. You're, you're you're ready to party. But there's no Pugna here, folks. We got a PL. Who's just finally getting in the game there, and it's going to be picking on up. You don't get to see the PL very often. Normally, more of your Banana Slam, Jamma, Fear have been kind of the top two players who've been running PL as of recent. It's just a lot of people fear not the same hero it used to be. More, yeah. it used to be like the the cancerous split pusher, but nowadays he's a he's a fighter. Just kind of puts himself in the lane, builds up some farm, gets a hold of a point where he can maybe consider jungling. You get that defusal blade, and then you're you're looking to you're looking to fight. Well, I, I talked about PL a lot when I cast with Zyre earlier this week, and the way that I feel about PL is I feel like people buy Midas on him and I still don't quite understand why they do because I feel like you need to get Diffusal Blade so you're as strong as you can be early and he kind of, I don't know, the Midas like delays your items a little bit. If It like basically means that you're not good until 15 minutes when you get Diffusal. You could have the Diffusal earlier at like 10 or 12 or something like that and then yeah. start diving heroes but it's really good against brew it's really good against sniper because you can definitely dive on top of them and batrider also you also you can definitely evade him by using double game. here oh, we go catch one. snowball hi s4 how you doing and i like it axe moves to the front and there's your first blood kaiser short for kaiser so say gets the kill right there and it's going to be lc who strike first moscow five that's how you do it I really like the way that they did that. They waited a really long time between the tier one and tier two, and then they moved to the jungle to sing, the swing around for the easy bounty run. Apparently, was, uh, shout out to really the good. action man, whoever that is. It's all about uh, all about action, I guess. Quap got the first blood. That's a really fast bottle for him. That's gonna make puppies. Well, it's not puppy mid. It's actually be Arteezy mid. It's gonna make Arteezy's life a little harder, especially because once Quap gets level two, I feel like she can be really aggressive here because she knows that she's gonna have some regen coming soon. She doesn't necessarily want to melee trade hits with Sniper, but I think she can kind of get away with it, except for the fact that Puppy is surely gonna sit behind him in anticipation of aggressiveness from Quap because that could turn things around and maybe get Arteezy an early kill if he gets lucky on headshots. What about this setup that LC have going on the top lane? Axe is going to be joined by two in this aggro trialing kind of a setup. Tusk is going to be zoning back S4, but S4 not looking to go at it alone. He's got Kuroki on the Skywrath Mage, but this three on two in the top lane where Axe can kind of do what he wants, and they could possibly go for some early dives with Snowball. Is Secret going to have their oh, hands yeah. full here? I think the cool thing about aggressive Axe tri lanes or dual lanes is that Axe can see us really rapidly. And against a melee hero, they can't really get farm to compensate for that. So the hardest thing about playing aggressive tri lanes is you want to dive very often, usually because you expect to lane a tri lane that you think is stronger. But it's hard to dive because it's hard to push the wave. But Axe can kill the wave so rapidly that it allows you to give more opportunities to go for those dives. And the best hero to go on is Skyrath Mage. He's got zero armor. He's got 560 HP. Man, Crow is all about buying null talismans on support lately just for the extra damage and stats. Yeah, Interesting. Normally, uh, Scars early will get like you know two, three clarities so, so they can keep or, getting out those boots. arcane bolts or boots. Yeah, so you can make the chase happen with already his incredible move speed. But I, I think this is smarter though if you think about it because he's already 325 movement speed. He doesn't really need boots. He gets plus nine damage. They're actually going on S4 a little surprisingly. There's the stun as well. Big fissure. There's the call. S4 is getting low and that is going to be his death. But Axe falls right after. Maybe Puppy will die. There's the uh, ice shards or whatever the heck that's called. Puppy will go down and maybe Tusk living. Nope. The Null Talisman is going to do it. And maybe even Crow's going to get a triple here. He's got two in Fade Bolt. 
Got and it. And I think that's going to be it. Wow. Double kill on Kuro. How about that for a null, huh? So he gets it done. It worked out. He got the Whoa. mana, but we see Queen of Pain coming in. A couple right clicks. Good deny by S4. Very likely that he'd do that. Good enough player to realize that that's going to result in the possibility of deny. So he gets the, gets the deny. Jeez. Well played. Well played. And you were right. It is Ice Shards. Make you feel a little yes, bit better. Yes, but I, I did say Fade Bolt instead of Arcane Bolt. It's okay. I suck, guys. I'm it's okay. Don't no, no flame me about going it. Going Arteezy. Ooh, this is kind of bad for Arteezy here. I feel oh, like he's he in trouble. Oh, he in. Yeah, they're going Quap, but there's going to be those Ice Shards. Snowball forward. Now you're he's Sniper. Trade, he's just going to man the blink. Tries to dodge it. Good play by Arteezy. That might get the kill. Oh! I oh, didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, he's like, that's just the tip. <laughs> and a great TP as well from Kuroki. Pulls him up to level four. Most skies we see lately don't do that well, but Kuro is wrecking right now. He's going for three nulls. Building nulls for days, I, guys. I want to say this. Yeah, I saw this three null build yesterday, too. It's it's pretty strong for your early game damage. I mean, if, if you think about the amount of int he's increasing here, he's doing like six per each, so he's going to give himself like 18 more int, which increases his nuke damage by about 12 per arcane bolt that's really not that amazing but it gives you a lot of right click damage yeah he hits harder stats. than anyone else on his team yeah and his attack range is really high at 600 his attack speed is bad because his agility is low but now he's got another nine agility that's 10 attack speed guys it's not that bad now i can't keep eyes on oh, the top lane now, yeah there goes the snowball they move on to kuroki nice little bounty you got there we want to take it, it but the Fissure slows him down, and now they're going to make a go on the Ventral Spear on the backhand side. Oh, can he get a kill with the Arcane Bolt? He won't. He ends up going down. It's a support for a support, though the bounty on Kuro definitely tips towards LC's favor. Yeah. They run away. and Now, top has been a hot mess right now for both sides. Yeah, really a lot nice. of engagements that worked out more likely Ooh, for Secret. RTZ might fight. But, no, no, oh my, yeah, I, I just want to take one moment to look go at ahead. bottom lane, but Do everything... It. But they're making it hard for me, right. Purge. They ignore, fight everywhere. Ignore everything. We I don't can't. care if a fight happens. I can't. Puffy's dying don't, now. Don't look. Like, don't look, man. <laughs> I, I gotta look. I can't look away. S4, though, is gonna be walking away. Low life, low mana. Looks to turn, re-engage as Kuro does show up. Starts dishing out the right click. Oh, Snowball. back in. Back the other way. They're gonna look to go on S4. Very low on life, but they can't get a hold of him. Now they turn back for Kuro. This call. And the call does not connect, but... Kuro wants it. It's gonna be close. Will he spin in time? And a couple more nukes gets it. Oh, my God. And here comes Puppy. Fissure could be on the route. It is. Great block. And a block. See you later, Spartan. Grab for S4 right there as the turnaround. This that's, lane, man. That's a level 5 support sky. And this game's going to get weird because you never have this much experience going to a support in a tri lane because usually you're relying on pulls and occasional ganks. This guy's been in 7 kills at the 5 minute mark. I mean, if he gets a level 6 at a stupidly fast rate, you could see some really amazing things happen. Like, oh, I'm just going to shift to the, the off lane where Zai has his flaming lasso. And I'm yeah. going to get the easiest kill ever on yes. the carry at 6 minutes because my support is level 6 already. You hope that when you have a Batrider Skyrath Mage that you can start doing that combo at, like, what, 15 as minutes in? As soon as you can. <laughs> as soon as you can is ideal, but have we ever seen it done at, like, 5 minutes, 6 minutes in? I mean, that's yeah. just ridiculous, so... Skywrath Mage. I want to say this is like one of the most dominant performances, but I wouldn't be lying. There's been other matches, but here we go. Boom! They get a hold of Arteezy with the scream. They make the, the their way out with the snowball, but they don't go too far. Kuro. He's got to be a little careful. Rotates he doesn't in. have any attack speed here. Oh, great silence on Quap. If he would have nuked him, actually, that would have been a kill there, but he didn't. And a couple more trades. Dagger comes through. He's going to jump away. Great deny from oh, Puppy man. there. They're still going to clean him up. He wants to last hit the Sigil. It's actually a lot of gold, about 80, but Towers do almost nothing. 90 gold here for the level 1 Sigil. I, I feel like Tusk is really showing his worth here. A little bit of a fight top, of course, because why would the fights ever stop? S4 really yeah. slow here. Bad oh comes God. in with a stupidly fast boot to travel. Now going to be able to chase <laughs> on Ventral inside. Spirit. Man, this game is weird. <laughs> <laughs> the chop makes him so fast. Great call, actually, by Axis. Could turn things. Well, we see the chop. It's so low. 277 is not low enough. The burn damage doesn't Ooh. get Axe. 26 HP. Oh, my gosh. Flame break? He doesn't have enough mana. He's so close. What a crazy game. This is ridiculous. This is like what I said yesterday with Zai. That's 49 CS at six minutes. This is what I've been trying to say, Purge. I've been trying to go to what bottom the? lane. This whole game, I've been trying to say, well, is it going to be worth? Because Zai has been doing whatever the hell he wants in the bottom lane. He's only going against the PL, a melee kind of core, and he's just getting all the farm. He's got 49 CS, and he went right for the boots of travel. Just straight to Bone 7 style. We could even see the Mask of Madness come out. Top lane, though. That's where all these fights freaking happen. And it just doesn't stop. Spartan's going to eat a little bit of nuke damage. And the rotations start coming back in. And their trifecta is whole once more.
Man, I, I feel like we're really seeing the value of Snowball. There they are going again. <laughs> Great split from S4. They might be able to turn this. They should go on the Tusk probably, but they actually change targets a bit. Zai comes in as well. Call, but he gets lifted in there. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Evade that damage, and then now you're going back in for the fight. Wave of Terror comes as well. Zai's getting a bit low and access. Proves to be a little too tanky here. A couple more nukes. Gets him. 145 damage. Thank God for no talismans, guys. The snowball comes to actually pull the tusk to a bad position, but Quap shows up going for another kill. Picks off Zai. Now going on to Croak. He doesn't even have to ulti for this. A couple right clicks, and that's going to be a dead Skyrath Mage. Tries to buy out before he dies, but nothing he can do there. And they're going toe to toe with Secret here. What a weird game. In this top lane, at least for now, I just I can't help but question like what who's getting what done elsewhere. You got to remember, there's a sniper in this game. Yeah. <laughs> he's been sitting here farming mid this whole time. It's not like he's rotating the top hey, and trying to get in with though. his assassinate. But yeah, he has died, and he he's not getting that luxurious loads of farm that like Zai's been getting. But okay, S4 toys with this zoning clap. Spit. Yeah, I was like, did he did he actually clap? He did. Okay. It's my side of the map. But yeah, he gets it done. And, well, Vengeful walks away from S4. And PL as well. That's the other thing. Yeah. PL's also been farming a lot bottom lane. He has the Aquila. Boots and a wand. 600 gold. This is just like the early kind of start here for your PL. There, There is some difference, though. Most PLs that I've seen in competitive, they always max Doppelganger. And it does... It's a great spell for evading your opponents and dodging spells and things like that. But it's... Well, it's, it's a good spell for dodging spells, but it's a terrible spell for getting away from your opponents because any good player can easily figure out which illusion is probably the real one. Yeah. So I, I personally feel whenever I play PL in pubs, I've only done it a couple times, so I'm not super thorough. But I think Phantom Rush is actually the best ability to max second because it gets your cooldown down to four. And once it's a four-second cooldown, that means once you're chasing somebody, they're Dyer's never getting away. Yeah. And if you get a Diffusal Blade, if they can't kill you before you kill them, you get the kill. And that's when you get into really dangerous territory on heroes. And most PLs just play super farming and get as many items. But I, I really feel like they could profit more from getting kills in the early game with lots of Phantom Rush levels. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he felt like with the lane he was set up in, just going mono e mono with a Bat Rider. He just put more emphasis on the Spirit Lance. But oh boy! Bottom lane, stun. Skyrath Mage uses the Doppelganger to go off to the right-hand side. Now he looks to turn around on a puppy. Spirit Lance is going to fly. Ooh, he's in, mm. But yeah, now he's in trouble. Kuro finds the real one. I zones him back. Okay. Wow, Double look at the damage. He just stops. He goes down and he turns back with a Spirit Lance. Can he get a kill in return? No! That smoke's oh, not going to disjoint the tower hit. And Just slightly too close. That would have actually kept him alive, though, because that was an illusion. Oh. He was far away from the tower. More fighting on the top lane, but, yep. you know, we didn't have oh, to tell you yeah, that. Goes oh in. Arteezy so low. He's dead. He gets to go down. Sour Strike's going to be there. S4 jumps in, gets the clap. Vengeful Spirit gets blasted in nuke. Meanwhile, Zai gets dunked right there from Madara trying to fly back and away. It's a three for three all day from top to bottom of this map, but it doesn't this stop there. Madara goes toe-to-toe okay, -to -toe with S4. Here comes Kaiser, moves in. Fissure connects, oh, takes nice. out Brew. Walk in, Echo Slam, fishes out the other. Madara walks away with a triple kill. What the hell are we watching right now? Ten minutes in, 18 to 14. Top of the net worth for Kaiser right here with RTZ right behind. My goodness. Man, Kuro's all about int items here. He's even going to pick up treads this game. Really extreme amounts of damage coming at him. And a huge mana pool as well. I, I would love to see another lasso, but we haven't actually gotten a, a blink dagger on the Batrider just yet. No, he, he hasn't progressed first. that much here. And his items actually haven't really gone anywhere either. He still only has Aqua in the magic stick. Do we have anything on the courier? Uh, doesn't look like it. Nothing. So yeah. a bit of a hard time for PL here. Regardless of his build, he just hasn't been getting that much farm, and he's died twice now due to a lot of pressure on his lane. And the hero just doesn't become useful until you get something like a Diffusal Blade. He's just not going to be useful for a while. So if he keeps getting pressured by Zai, yeah. it's just so tough. He's like half the net worth in CS behind even the Batrider. But, oh, nice lockdown here on the Tusk. Gust of Shot will slow him down, but he will so be able to walk low. away with his life. But he cannot look for a fight here. He needs to go back and heal on up. So yeah. he gets the hell away. That maybe could have been a kill if Kuro realized he was about to take that much damage. Maybe he was a little bit too far away or something. But yeah. Oh, there's Blink finish on Batrider, so now things get really dangerous. So I think what Seeker needs to do is they need to probably sit Kuro to farm around the area of the Batrider. That way, anytime any hero pokes their head on the ball lane, you just kill him. So they can't do a whole lot about that. Secrets, uh, S4 is getting pressured, actually. It's Earthshaker canceling a TP. Yeah, then look, now Kuro's shifting towards the bot lane. They see the PL. He'll move into the jungle. If they find them and they last all the right targets, a dead hero every time because he's such a high level. They're pinging oh, for it. Their Here target comes. is going to be PL. 
All right, there he is. I'm they spot him. Farm oh, some mud golem. Dodges Whoa, it. Great escape that here. That was a really quick reaction. He's in trouble though. He's got a TP. Twenty seconds for another doppelganger. And there's and nothing he can do boom. at this point. Sorry, flame break. I got it for you. Well, Bye. he can fight him. Lasso, pull back. Curl's got to get there to help out, but there. Okay. Yeah, there's Just not. Deny it. me. Deny me. Doesn't get it. Okay, well, so. Even if he had another, if he even if he had more levels of doppelganger, I don't think he was going to survive there. It was just he needs some ward coverage. I mean, the, his allied teams are fighting so much on this top half of the map. Does that look crazy to you too? Okay, it looks crazy on my screen. Yeah, when all the wards like are a, up there. If I draw, it looks just as crazy. Oh, it yeah. doesn't look crazy for you. Yeah, yeah, that's a dope. So all the wards are up there. He needs some coverage here on the bot lane. Oh, I'm still drawing. I didn't even realize. <laughs> you know what? Let's just draw the entire rest of the game with my map. What's the big that's deal? That's a sticky keyboard. I'd watch out for that one okay. over there. Uh, Cyro always keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> Back in behind, Zai and Viz trying to bottle up, get a little bit of mana here. That's no lasso, but he is. Hi, how you doing? This Just could be jumps a over. Oh, him. he loses the vision. There it is. Stun comes through. Needs a bit more damage. It's so close. Oh, gets it done. Puppy what a gets dunk. An Echo off right before he dies. Snowball for the RTZ save, for but it's sure. going on to Arteezy. Can they burst him down in time? They can. Jeez. That's just getting blown up right there. Three for one trade. Happily traded right there for Secret. Finally to the point where Tusk's snowball is a little scary. I mean, there are a lot of AoEs coming out of Secret. Yeah. Flame Break is almost maxed out here. We've got Panda Clap. We've got Earthshaker abilities. His dunk was amazing there. They just got a little too grouped up on the greedy attempt from Bench here. He probably needed to do an attack stun to be able to get the kill there because he just needed slightly more DPS, yeah. and it didn't work out. Even still, really greedy place to start a fight behind their Tier 1. That means if, if this fight starts, and the fight's in any way close, anybody teleports to the Tier 1, and then you've got you know, a bad swing. And he actually goes for a Vit Booster on PL first. Interesting choice. Uh, oh. I don't like this. I feel like this should have been a Treads instead. It's about the same cost, gives less HP, but... I, I, I Maybe he's trying to just save for a BOT Slater, like late, late game, but... I don't like the vid booster. I feel like it's not doing a whole lot for him. I feel like if you should just go treads into defusal. I, I feel like that's the build that does the most. Well, we'll see if he can make the best of what itemization he's decided to go for here, but it's just felt like the overall game plan for LC has been go, 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 but now they have to put the pedal down and well, they're not going to get the chance. Kaiser mid lane gets uh, locked on from Zai and it's just an easy Mystic Flare combo and cleanup right there. Kuro and his Skyrath Mage. Seven and five. You don't see that very often in your Skyrath mages. And, well, with that, they're able to fall through and try to make a push happen here in the mid tier one. Meanwhile, bottom lane is PL doing his own split push. He might be able to trade towers. Top lane, Madara. He's gonna get uh, well ganked right now. Snipe flies through. Boom. See ya. Gets sniped on down. Arteezy grabs that kill and they make it two kills across the map. Twenty to twenty now, even up. But mid lane, it doesn't stop there. Cyclone now wow. gonna be throwing up the tusk. Vengeful Spirit trying to get away. Slowly burned. Flame Break. It's Zayu gets that kill. Kuro barely alive. Oh. No! Goes down to those Ice Shards. I give my life to get you, Kuro. Screw you, says the Tusk. But I he don't think that's dying. worth it, man. It's not worth three for one trade where Secret's, Secret rather still profit. Getting in another sweet 1,500 gold swing. And Zai, farming in the jungle nearby, has a neighbor. Hey, PL, how's it going? Moving on forward. And he builds a Vanguard, actually, is what he does with the Vip Booster. So okay, the survivability problems that he was having, he grabs more Doppelganger as well. I, See, the I, thing is, his Doppelganger not, also works well for farming, I guess, if he needs to quickly it doesn't. farm. You don't it, think so? No, the quick, you get the Illusions. The slightest. The Illusions is, do help for a right, small let, period let, I'm going to math this out here. Okay. You get two it. Illusions, okay. one of which does zero damage. Okay. So one. It spawns Illusions at a rate of 8%. Okay. Okay. His other illusion does 20% damage, which also spawns illusions. Do the illusions. illusions spawn illusions still? At a rate of 8%, which okay. is pretty terrible, considering your hero does 40%, which is super often, right? Your illusions come from your hero. Your illusions don't do damage unless... They don't do good damage unless you have a diffusal blade. And in fact, the illusions do less damage than they used to. They do 16% now. I will agree with that. Now. Yes. So you don't use it for farming. It's not about farming. That's an escape skill entirely. Or a close the gap to a hero that's a bit far away or jump a cliff or something. You need to get a damage item. You have to get diffusal blade. I think the Vanguard is an option here because he's been pressured so much he needs a way to keep his HP up and to stay alive. But man, he's he's having a rough game. I mean, he just needs a Diffusal Blade. It's going to be a while until you can get it. If you're getting a Vanguard, I imagine you're in a rough game. Oh, he's oh in trouble. It it's the get it. silence. No, you're not doing anything. No, and, man, he's done. 
No, they can't even get yeah. the swap to save him. Oh, look at the slow. They had a slow on the snowball as well, so that means <laughs> Tusk is just in a bad spot. That is just an awkward snowball going nowhere real quick. Shards trying to keep someone back. It's S4 for now, but Casper, they get the jump, they get the silence, and they will get the kill. Nice maybe? Stun set up on might live. They want a no, two for maybe on the Madara thereafter, and they could get it. Snipe will fly in. Connects. Kuro, though, very low. Goes down as the trade. A worthy trade. And here comes that snowball again. This one not slowed. Brings in some help. Puppy gets uppercutted. Swap back save, but gets taken care of with that fissure. And now Vengeful Spirit, the last little hope here for LC. Doesn't get the kill. Can't even get the kill. Puppy walks away with about 30 life. It's Tranquil's paying off there. Four armor. Not to be under un underestimated no, on a support. It just helps so much. He's going to suicide here. I don't think he did that on purpose. Maybe Vengeful I don't Spirit, think he did if you that put on one point in the Vengeful Aura, you would have got that kill. But, uh, yeah, it's very likely, actually. Um, an extra point of armor is like 6% damage boost, basically, whereas Vengeful Aura is 12%. I, I think it's not worth skipping all the levels of Vengeance Aura. At least one point is worth it, because you're increasing your damage by about the same that your Wave of Terror would do with an extra point. Now, going back to PL, because I'm not letting you get away with that. All right. We got interrupted by fights. I would say in different games where you have more space, you're not stuck in a one-on-one -on -one against Batrider, and you have more control, maybe support's helping you out. I think it's okay to be a bit more greedy with your doppelganger to use it as a farm. And I know oh, you have probably the upper it. hand on me, but I will say it's that so we need to phone in Banana Slam Jammer or Fear to validate that. All right? <sighs> yeah. PL's a new hero. Yeah. I haven't played him that much. Only like five yeah. games, and the I level I play him is very much lower, but... I, I just don't... I haven't played him in a competitive, competitive game either in any way, so I don't know. It's... I, I just... The farm increase is so small. The major difference is probably being able to blink from camp to camp. That's where you could get your farm efficiency increase. It's not about the illusions. It's more about having the blink to go from, like, you know, small camp to the medium camp without walking around the trees. That's the main efficiency you'd probably get from it, but the, the farm increase you get from the DPS is so minor that... It's okay. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't argue it for that reason. It's fine. Just want to play devil's advocate. Okay. Your purge after all. I'm sure everyone out there is going to have your back on this, but we'll see. PL still new, fresh kind of a hero, and well, secret. They move into the Roche pit, and they start duking it out. Now already down to half-life. There's no contention nearby because LC are still trying to make this death train happen here. Ever since the start, they've been all about making these fights happen. And top, they're not going to find one. So they might just kind of make the best of it and go for a tier one. But this is a tier one traded for a secret Aegis here, which will probably be pocketed up here by Arteezy, who already has his Maelstrom. Now 1,500 gold pocketed up. Hasn't opted to go for the Morbid Mask, Mask of Magnus kind of build up quite yet. Yeah. But he can't do that this game, really, because they have too many good heroes at diving him. They yes. basically have four heroes. It's really five heroes that are good at diving. Axe, Venge can swap, Tuskar can snowball, Quap can blink, and PL is very similar. He can charge or doppelgang to close gap. He can't, like in games like these, it's difficult to get Mask of Madness on Sniper because Sniper's survivability is by being at range. If you're playing a PA, it doesn't matter that much because you have 50% evasion. Mm -hmm. But on Sniper, you have to be careful about when to get the uh, the Mask of Madness. And this is probably not the game for it. They're going to try to chase here looking for a snowball maybe on the Batrider Illusion. But I think they realize now that the jig is up. And they're actually going to go on. Toski's in trouble. They got to chase them a little bit here. They're going to silence him. That's a guaranteed kill. The rest of his team is trying to come up to defend the tower. But the tower is going to be gone. And Fan Lancer blinks away again. Yep, they're going to be able to walk out. They're going to be sacrificing their tier 2 tower here. Secret looking to chew and swallow up LC Hole here at this point. And with that, they get their tower. Arteezy grabs it up. 2,300 gold now saved up on your sniper. And they could keep this kind of a tempo if they want, going from lane to lane, clearing out the rest of those tier 2s if they want. I feel like they're pretty comfortable at taking a team fight at this point, as long as they have good formation, but... Run Nick. courier. Oh god, yeah. Good. Both Queen of Pain and this courier just get the hell out of there. Get the hell out. Attack. And they'll linger around mid lane and probably look to take away some ancients and eventually make another go at a tier two. Yeah. Uh Puppy still doesn't have a blink dagger, but I, I feel like his value has been amazing thus oh, far. Yeah. Doesn't it it doesn't it feel like he's just playing a whole different kind of hero than some of the other Earthshaker players we see? Like he plays he it similar like I'd see like PPD play it. He does the same thing. He gets like Tranquil, Soul Ring, he's just is where you need Super him to be poverty. at the right time. Yeah. You just know, he's landed selfless. a lot of fissures. He's gotten echo slams off. His KDA is still pretty good. He's been in a ton of fights. 
It's been doing a really good job this game, yeah. despite not having Blink. And once he gets Blink, then things get even scarier for the Radiant team. They're already having trouble defending initiations. Look at this again. They're again, again ganking the PL. He's going to spot this. He's going to jump through the trees. Bad doppelgang, though. He's in trouble. Will probably get fish. Nope, they're not sure which one's the real one, actually. And they do eventually go on the right one, and oh. they're still the, like... Once they find it, I mean, that's the benefit of Doppelgang is one of the creeps, one of your illusions takes full damage, like regular damage, so yep. it's hard to tell which one's real, but I feel like nobody plays mind games with the hero. I feel like you should hotkey the one that's super tanky and try to trick people once in a while, run that direction, you know? It's yeah, like well, the no, Manta yeah, split I, yeah. with the correct one, but most people haven't quite developed the hero to that point yet. I feel like it's it used to be a lot easier on the old version. With the old Doppelwalk, of course, you could always yeah, do a little bit of mind games there mm -hmm. or your long-lasting illusions, and we've seen it done. I know yeah. There's plenty of highlight videos out there featuring a certain demon that have done it. And I agree with you. There's definitely a huge mind game factor you can do, and you could still do with the hero. But many teams don't consider it. Right now, Yule's up. Adventure Spear can be knocked forward, gets everything off, and then goes down. So that's a quick quick kill sacrifice. The rest of LC are like, we're done here. Got we a gotta, blink on Sniper. Go. Uh, right. This is a counter to mobility, or it's a it's a mobility advantage item, but he's using it as a counter to it. Can the catch axe here? He looks in trouble. They need to stop him from blinking. There it is. There good they should be step. good. Yeah, no call for you. Sorry, Madara. Well, here's Puppy Kaiser tries to zone them back. It's Yules himself, and they still slowly bring down the giant Madara here. And there's gonna be the Fissure setup. Puppy always there and behind to kind of help out with an assist, and it's Zai who cleans out the kill. Now in a mega kill streak on your back rider, back rider, the bat rider, putting the team on his back, I guess. He's got boots to travel, Yules, four staff blink. He rides whatever's around it. I mean, if there's a bat, it's good, but like... He's all about the bear back. Uh-oh, that's four mid lane. Boom! Big sonic wave, no. and they get the bear. Big orchid damage there, Yep, coming through. They finally get a kill, and Vengeance is still not going to get Vengeance War, which is... Yeah, not a... Preference. Yules, flame break, boom, gotcha. Just being annoying, and a dagger. pain, though. This tower is deniable, so he should be able to get it. Free. How's Peel doing? Okay, he has maxed out Phantom Rush now. He's always oh, grabbing a Yasha. I don't like that at all. Don't like the Yasha, huh? You don't he's, like a lot about this oh, PL. God, it's <laughs> he's basically building tank into no damage. All he's giving himself is movement speed and attack speed. And his illusions. Some point of no, an his armor point illusions maybe? do sixteen percent. If we do the math, it means his illusions are doing like sixteen to twenty damage per yeah. hit physical. That's garbage. If you have a stout shield, that's nothing. Like, he can't go for a Yasha here. He's, if he builds a Manta first, he's just playing the hero wrong. Boom. Completely playing the hero wrong, I think. Imagine if one of Seeker could get, like, a Crimson Guard. Oh, Spartan dead as well. Man, they get Vengeful, they get Spartan. It's an easy two-for-none special. Secret just continue to put on a clinic here at this point. Very similar to game number one. It seems a bit close for a bit. We had a lot of action in the top lane that kind of could go either way, but then eventually... You can see Secret really, like, shine through and just really take advantage of the game at this point. Yeah. Knowing what they have to work with and really executing well. Whereas LC, it seems like a bit of a lost cause. They're kind of frantic all over the place. Top lane potentially getting caught out again. Could be Madara here. He's got a DD this time. It's a little scary for Axe. Yeah, this, is, this could be just slow and painful here at this point. Oh, oh Kaiser shows up. Needs a Quap ult. Doesn't have it, though. A yeah, couple right clicks. I think he can get this. Yeah, big damage from the Orchid, and that's going to be it. Nice. So they turn it around for once. All right, nice stuff. Side so kind of trying to do the job himself. Probably needed an extra hand, but... Oh, he's going in. Puppy's going to try to get the kill. He's going to be able to get it. Boom. Picks off the Quap solo with a Blink Dagger. That's the power of the Earthshaker support. Not a lot of supports can do those solo kills. And there it is. He's chasing down Kuro, but unfortunately... The way that Sky ulti works. Oh, look at that charge goes all the way around, but <laughs> as soon as he turns the corner, Arteezy's pointing the gun right at his face. Are you committed to that rush once you go, or can you stop halfway You through? can stop. You can stop, but okay. it can do amazing things. You can, like, charge after blink daggers and stuff like yes. that. It's it's kind of ridiculous, but if you had a defusal blade, that would definitely have been a dead hero. But the issue is that Sky's ulti, it hits the real hero. It doesn't touch illusions. Illusion heroes would be way too good against it otherwise, so... But he didn't get the kill. He had the Yasha, but the movement speed is only good for running away from heroes that you are evading battle from. Because you've already yeah. got a max charge on heroes you're going in on. What does the Yasha really accomplish, you know? Yeah. It, that should have been a Diffusal Blade. He was only a thousand gold away from it. He could have had it, and he could have had good damage. I think he's just super tilted because he had such a rough start because he got pressured so much. Yeah. The, the Yasha does not accomplish anything except for helping him run away from his enemies. I mean, if you're going to go this build, why would you put all your points into Phantom Rush? You should have been doing all with Oppelganger. 
Yeah, I don't know. You know? I mean, could could see uh, how much history he has playing with the newest hero in the play. We don't have a whole lot of background history as far as relax and how he likes to run it. Maybe they just felt he was a useful grab in the draft they have at hand. Yeah. And, you know, he can work pretty good against the bat with how elusive he could be with Doppelganger. But, you know, yeah, as it is right now and the way he is itemizing, it's definitely in question. So we'll try to at least look at the positive for now and see if LC can find their way back into this one. Top lane, they have eyes to make a move potentially onto S4, but S4 quickly blinks out in a way. He does have help nearby, so it could end up being a bait that would have worked out in their favor, but for now, it's just timid play. LC just, it feels like they constantly just are looking for kills. I think Secret just yeah. feel more comfortable that if they can slow this game down, if they want to decide to take the time to farm, they will always have the upper hand. It's more of their game to lose at this point. It was definitely a really aggressive game early on, and but there's a bit of ganking on both ways. Actually, a swap coming. Going on Kuro, he doesn't get the high ground, so he should be killed here. No chop, unfortunately. Moving speed open, really nice. Quap ult comes out, catches two BKB, but a little bit late, so her HP is low, and now she's got to retreat to the high ground. Arteezy's up chasing, he's got a Mjolnir, tons of damage coming from him. That's going to finish up the Axe. He does reflect a lot of damage back to himself, though. PL Illusions doing a whole lot of nothing in the backside. Back goes down, that's a gem on the ground. They got to defend that because they need it to D ward. And now Quap escaping. Arteezy's got a trap in two seconds. Puppy sees that he grabs the gem, and they can't make the chase on the Kaiser. Kaiser will be able to get away. It ends up being a 3-for-2 trade, but because of how far behind LC is, they actually get the gold advantage. Not by much, but they, they do manage to get themselves a, a 200 gold swing. <laughs> so, Secret still with 3 strong, hanging around this mid lane, knowing that only the PL and the Quap are left to defend. They'll push the lane on forward, and maybe look to step back. And I wager that they'll probably hang around the Roche pit, knowing that it could be up at any moment here. Now, looking into the second clock period, it's it's a longer one. So we got about two minutes to go or so before it will be back up and at the ready. But Secret can kind of take things at their own tempo of what they want to do and wait for it to spawn up, get the Aegis in hand, and maybe look to breach some high ground. Hmm. Well, they're just going to reset for now, I guess. They, there's some wards that they can kill, at least. They've got that going for them. But they're a little scared to cross the river. Even though they do have really good mobility. Even Look how farm Kuro is. Holy crap. 12, 9, and 10 on a hard support. He's got a Yules and a 4 staff. Two really good ways to stay alive. And I the Vladzor helps a lot, too. 5 armor when you... I mean, he doesn't have a lot of HP, but his damage output's really solid route right now. 110 int gives him, like, uh, an extra... 80, his Arcane Bolts are actually doing pretty close to 300 damage a hit. That's pretty amazing for a 2 second cooldown. That's really good. 160 plus 1. Yeah, he's about yep. 300 damage per Arcane Bolt. That's if he can stay is. alive for yeah. just a bit, maybe 10 seconds. Too. So he doesn't yeah. have to be close to the battle at all. Just boop, boop, yeah. boop. That's 900 damage right and, there. And the other cool part about all this int that he's bought is that his mana pool is so big that a lot of skies, it's basically like you ulti combo and you're out of mana. But he can do an ulti combo and still have leftover. Swap going to the high ground into an immediate punch oh, on S4. Can man. they get the killer? A good execution. Can they chop him? They're going to need the attack speed. Doesn't get it. But looks like an ult on. No, he keeps changing targets. There it is. Vengeful Spirit is in some trouble. Gets picked off. Going after Kuro now. Kuro, Yules it up. Oh, Quapo no. catches Arteezy at least, but still chasing no axe call. And now Arteezy looking to kite if possible. But now he's got to fight the Quap. He's pretty much here or dead. Great echo slam from Puppy. Arteezy going to TP back. He might not make it. He doesn't. Follow up by Phantom Lancer, still Whoa. chasing it. It looks like LC finally gonna win a fight here, chasing out Puppy. Another enchant totem buyback from Arteezy, though. He wants to kill the Phantom Lancer. He's gotta dodge the hit. He can't get it off in time. Great fissure from Puppy. And it looked good for him, but oh, that's. They lose everyone it. at the end of it. Arteezy gets a double kill after buying back. That was LC's best chance. They had a great flank yeah. play set up. They get their quick kill, they take out the brew. And then they begin to make a dive. They feel like they got a good thing going. They really commit hard, and things get a bit silly at that point, and yeah. Secret managed to kind of take it back. They made the right call there with them diving being a good thing, but then the buybacks come, and the game entirely yeah. changes, and it's really hard to pull back when you're that adrenaline. Dude, we've been yeah. losing all game. We've been losing all game. We're winning. We're winning. And bam, the buyback comes. Make a couple mistakes, and yeah. things don't go well. So huge buyback from Arteezy there. But as a whole, good plays from the rest of Secret to clean that up a little bit. One thing I want to point out, we finally got to defuse the blade. So now we're going to see PL do some nasty, nasty defuse the blade things. And building a Manta is definitely the next thing he wants. So yeah. he's got the Yasha for it. Manta is next. He can spam illusions. He can drain mana. He can, if they can initiate on S4, guys only got a 546 mana pool. They drain his mana. We've got no split, and then S4 is a yeah, worthless right. hero. So that's what they should probably aim for, if possible. Similar to what they did in the last fight, they relied on silence before, but now they don't have to kill him. They could just drain his mana and then kill him. 
So that would be a good option. Peel's also level 16. So he's got full doppelganger. We're going to see him being annoying and dodging spells and all that good stuff. What about that drunken haze, though? <laughs> it is it is AoE, I suppose. But I, I, I don't know if you remove it if you use doppelganger or not. I, I don't... I think it might remove some debuffs, but probably not super amounts of them. I don't know. Well, that I, is a curious interaction. I didn't even think about it like that, too. Yeah, Let's he can see. definitely dodge the projectile. It is a projectile, yeah, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah. Um, and he'll have Manta as well. I think Manta will remove it. And Manta. Yeah, doppelganger. I, I'd be curious to see how that interaction could work here, but... That's definitely a step in the right direction for LC. If they can kind of pump the brakes a little bit here, if they can find a couple of picks and then not get too bloodthirsty yep. and crazy, this uh, PL could bring the game back little by little, Oops. but... Oh, Finding boy. The yeah. They get a hold of uh, Kaiser here, pull back into the assassinate. Dunk as well. Doesn't yep, need it. Oh, might have needed to. Blinks away, gets away. Venge is going to die now, I think. Yeah, it will. Good swap back Almost save, lived. though. Kaiser's oh. still alive. Oh! Last Waves second. goodbye. Jeez, so Puppy close. Size, like it. I don't want that to happen. He is not done yet. Forces forward. Oh, he's not done. Another force forward. Turns, Turns and fights. He's got a Yules in three. He's got a BKB as well, but he's not too worried. He might die to you. Ooh, that was close. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, Puppy should have dunked the Quap. He needed the chain stun. He didn't quite have enough oh, duration. S4, though, gets caught out on the other side of the map and gets taken down from Tusk, PL, and Axe. All right. Your Brewmaster. Going to be out. Pretty good. We already used the split and everything. And, well, gets dropped. So, good for them. Yeah. LC get a little bit of something there while Secret have their hands full with that top lane. I guess you could say Quap creating a bit of space there for them on the bottom. But only one more outer tower stands here for the LC group. This top tier 2 tower. Radiant's Secret, like sharks in water, though. Attack. Swimming around the area. Have eyes to see. LC, who's nearby, who might be farming instead and not looking to defend. Placed on a nice little sentry. There's going to be no ward there. Slightly outside of range, though. Look yeah. how close it is. Oh, man, you're it's right. It's a bit of ward yeah. metagame coming out. Oh, that's a dead queen of pain. Will we see a dunk? Oh, my he God. He definitely didn't hold back this time. That is a, <laughs> that's an ancient seal plus Earthshaker combo. If you thought that did damage before, man, throw that ancient hurt. seal on top, and that's a big damage amp. So kill on the enemy core. He did have BKB, but he was going high ground there, and they, he walked right into that one. Very unfortunate. Now out a minute with no buyback. It's a big, big deal. BKB. He can initiate, pull somebody mid. Puppy only has a fissure, though. Gets Madara. Pulls the axe back in forward. Kuro waiting before he lines up the Mystic Flare. Maybe uh, doesn't want to go into the Blade Mail, but it doesn't matter. Madara ends up going down. Now Puppy. Very little on mana. Still getting the job done. Yule's going to be connecting on your PL. PL. Oh, Doppel doesn't get low gets ground. away, but does not get to the low ground. Does still get swapped back. Oh. Save from Vengeful Spirit. There we go. Lucian's doing damage. Finally, Puppy's low at 200. Still chasing him, though. He's got to jump on the sniper. I think that's what I'd go for. He's going in. Melee range. Hitting Arteezy. Can he get the lightning? Prox goes high ground again. Big flame break there, and he's stuck in the trees. Oh. All right. He can doppelgang once. No the Yule's Double Yule's again. gaming? Doppel? No. Doesn't do it. He's getting close to getting carry. Like, think if he got a Diffusal Blade earlier, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, you could definitely see how things really get turned up on your PL once you get that Diffusal together. Yeah. The damage just gets out of control. At that if point. they have mana. Because most of the damage that you're getting is from draining their mana from the feedback damage. Yeah. Again, the Illusions do really weak damage individually, but if they have mana, you're doing you're draining them fast, and Crow and Earthshaker are perfect Radiant targets for that. Tower. Heroes that have low armor and decent mana pools, those are the ones you want to go on. Quap will dish out the Agnum Scream just to clear out the wave a little bit here. And now they pop the Glyph. Trying their best to stall them out. Axe is going to be back now, and that's enough for Secret to second guess on over committing into this. But there's Scotty now complete on Arteezy and his sniper. So now he's going to be yeah. that much bigger. It's more mana to burn through, I suppose, but yeah, yeah he does have more life to go along with he it. He did a really nice job adjusting his item build to the game. Um, he went Mount, uh, Mjolnir, which helps for, uh, counter the illusion here, mm -hmm. so you definitely need some AoE. He can put the buff on himself if he's getting focused, and that's a ton of damage sources, which will proc the laning more often. So you can kill the illusions really fast, but AoE is not exactly the perfect secret to countering PL anymore. It's more about finding the right hero and killing him. So the Mjolnir still is going to be really useful, and Thuskadi as well. He can keep himself far away from the opponents. He's going to really screw over Axe, even Tusk, um, and even chasing PL is definitely an option now. So, And the Blink Dagger was a nice adjustment. I'm just really happy he didn't go Mask of Madness. I think that would have been a mistake. Aegis does run out, by the way. Okay, so now I'm not going to have the luxury of that second life. 
Secret still continue to keep that creep pressure across the river on their side so that if they did want to step back for what Roche is to come, they can get it there with plenty of space to work with. Uh-oh, Zai. Oh, that, he can actually get this kill. Forward. He's going to have to pop be a BKB. Careful. Oh, BKB is going to be can, He can still chase this. Like he can, he can continuously chase. Oh, he pulls back. Pulls back, fear that he's going to be going too far into the dark and don't know what secret member could be there behind him. Puppy is nearby, but it's top lane where they have another two going for a tier two. That last outer tower will go down. And LC oh, big moving. call. Big Gets jump. them both. Can they lock them? Scream lined up, and here comes the right click, and wow. the double dunk flies through. Madara cleans out the top secret lane, and they take it back. 35-49. It's a step in the right direction, but they got... Ten more steps to go. <laughs> not, not only that was that was Artizi's buyback kill. By the way, he hasn't died since then, to oh, my yeah. knowledge. So he's dead for a hundred seconds. Yeah, he got that. Scotty. And he bought out, so he can't actually yeah. do anything right now. This is a really good opportunity for LC to accomplish something. If they're tracking his items, they could see that he bought the Asha. But this might be a Quap death. Fisher, we'll see a dunk most likely. Enchant totem. It's gonna be close and get him. Boom. Quap dies again. Man, Zai's doing such a good job. It doesn't matter where he is. He always finds a hero, and there's always an ally that's kind of close enough range. That way, no matter who he finds, it's a dead hero. Like, that's such a big kill there. They had two dead heroes, and now they've equaled it up to a, th a yep. four versus three. And now the Radiant team's not going to feel so comfortable in nope. doing aggressive things anymore. Nope. And Zai gets another item. Refresher now. Like, <laughs> man, this guy is so good. He is, man. This team, it's hard to pick out if there's a, even an MVP in most of these matches as far as who's bringing what. I mean, we already have, have acknowledged Puppy and his Fissure setup or Earthshaker kind of a game. Oh, hold though. Swap back. You might have cast your curse to Zai right there, dude. I, did. I have, definitely did. I that is it. the classic CC that we call the caster curse where you <laughs> give lots of props to someone how good they play and then they just get murdered like that. So. Yeah. Really good execution, though. They swap timed the Walrus Punch at the same time. That's like the fourth time they've done this combo. They swap, and immediately the one-second stun, followed up by the Snowball one-second stun. That's a lot of disable. And at that point, Venger, whoever else can do a follow-up disable. Really good ganking combo there. I, f I feel like there's a lot of synergy in LC's draft here, that, and they've definitely practiced this. I can see a lot of refinement here. Ooh, Another Madara. kill. Damn, that's Find that's Sky. On Kuro, top lane, wasn't even expecting it. Kuro just caught out on his own. Your Axe finds another grab, and he's got his Ogre Club. Looking to finish out an Agnum Scepter at this point in the game. Or he has two of the four components. And I, I smell a comeback, man. They can definitely... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to counter Caster Curse and smell okay. a comeback with LC. I well, mean, that's that's the that's the that's the double caster curse. What happens? You're giving then, props dude? to LC, and now Secret are gonna come back and win. Okay, good. So you gotta say Secret is still in this. I mean, or you know, they're good. They're they're sitting pretty right here. Secret, there's no chance they can lose this. Then that's okay. when the comeback happens. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll we'll just continue controlling the game as we see fit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, secret though they make do. I imagine the focal point now from both sides is going to be on this roach soon. The secondary timer pops up, and it's a short one. It's going to be about thirty seconds or so. Oh, wow. It'll be back up. Oh, uh, it's about a minute, I think. You just can't see the. I just, can they just make it a digital clock already? Like, is it really that important? We have skateboards on Courier's perch. <laughs> can't we have like numbers on the clock? <laughs> no, dude, that's just be this cool light uh, laser Illuminate. Thing. Oh, the uh, third angle to the light. It, has it even spotted the? the timer yet the, the after roche timer i think it has that's yet. how we don't know there's not even an indicator to show that's it. on the second it's like oh You're just supposed it's to. right next right. to orion's belt you cast this game i'm gonna i'm gonna analyze this and i'm gonna figure this out get the get to the second you're a man of there. numbers i could already tell it's it's really true <laughs> you was no well, yes. as a man of numbers you should appreciate the fact that i want numbers on the clock so well secret here they move up it's start up. to right, scout right. out the lc timer yeah i was right <laughs> so right so right it was like a one minute or whatever, something like that. Oh, snipe on that illusion, got him. But they're just trying to create the space, maybe put down a... Do they have any wards on hand to kind of make sure they can maintain the vision over Ooh, here? Zai spotting heroes? Can they... they get the kill. If they get anyone oh, picked off here, block. double. We get last one one, wants to go for the next target. Good Ventral. Ventral Spirit was not an appetizing treat, but might have to be now as the swap back Yules is there. Does decide to get a hold of Ventral Spirit. Takes out that one. Makes it two-man kill. They could go back for the Roche if they want to, or they can go for high ground. We'll see Secret as they plant themselves in mid. They're going to go for the high ground. So this could be a tier three, some damage on the racks, and then fall back for the Roche. Or at least, maybe hopefully they were going to try to bait out a buyback, but there's no buyback to, to even use. Yeah, I feel like they might as well take just take the racks here. Well, buyback was up now, and he quickly uses it. And now... Oh, S4 screen. might be in trouble here. Oh, he does get dunked. Whoa. Bit of a mistake. This could allow them to chase here. Movement speed advantage. Buyback as well. 
from the Tuskar to get some extra stuns here. Yules is up on Skyrath Mage. He's going to need a blink call. Gets it off. Sakura's in trouble. Big damage coming in. He's almost in dunk range. Great Yules Whoa. as well. Snowball comes through. Waste some time going after Puppy. But Puppy four staffs the low ground. Punch on top of Batrider. He's low as well. They keep forcing. Four staff gaming, man. Haven't seen this since like MLG Columbus. It's unbelievable. They get everyone out of the range just in time. They knew it was the time to disperse the second the S4 went down. And they surprisingly don't lose more. So they hold on. Without a brew, and Vengeful Spirit coming right back up. Elsie Maybe. are creeping towards the Roche yeah. side here. Maybe they can make a go at it, though. They do have Zai. This Batrider. He's heading that way. Pings are flying out. It's Man. scouted. Roche is there, and a buyback from S4. They don't want them to have this yeah. easy. I mean, they don't want them to have that comeback. S4 was really not expecting the dunk there. Uh, the fight changed so drastically. If he just would have been a little bit less greedy and dropped his split, they... Very likely could have taken Rax there. I don't even think we would have seen Tusk buy back for that one. They just would have let the Rax go. So that was a pretty big advantage. Uh, no new items on Sniper. He hasn't gotten anything in advantage. Since that Scotty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. He made a Manta. Manta excuse Manta. me. Yeah, he yeah, went yeah. from Yasha to Manta. Which is pretty good at dodging silences, I guess. Oh, oh wow. Queen of Pain did a screen bottom lane to push it out. Zai actually almost blind caught her with a oh, flame really? break to stop her from teeping away. It was close. A few okay. feet off, unfortunately. But Queen of Pain will make it out scot-free. All the meanwhile, Secret move themselves into the pit. They get it started here. But look, Purge, LC are on the way. They're oh, smoked, my though. God. This could happen. They do have a ward. They will see this coming. The look at the Shrapnels going down, trying to stop them. Fissure block as well. They're just saying, we want to take this no matter but what. Killing Sigil. Life. There's this S4 ulti. He's really making sure that they're going to get this. This is like serious gatekeeper. Yeah, this is <laughs> it's, not it's coming completely by. worth it. I mean, it is. if you keep them outside of range here, we're going to be talking about an Aegis on Sniper. Then they can just back up, wait for S4 ulti to come and back up. Geez. He might be in trouble, though. No, he pulls the he pulls the stone, stone one back. Cheese is going to get picked up. You can actually drain the mana from those pandas really rapidly with PL. It's kind of a nice counter. If you drain the mana, they can't do annoying things, you know? Like, like cyclones and rocks and immolation burns. Oh, immolation doesn't cost mana. But... Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Even if you weren't able to kind of bring down the mana before the split, it still offers a lot after mm -hmm. those splits. So they make it happen, though. Secret, they get their Roche, they get their Aegis, they get to walk away with their extra life, and now they feel a little bit more comfortable that the potential comeback period for LC might have been nerfed down for now. But they have to still put a lid on this game and close out this series. They are up one game. Did a really nice job putting on a clinic in game number one against LC. Yeah, but it's a did. best of three, and they need this game to close out a 2-0 series. Yo, and Crow has some money, man. Holy crap. He's rich. He, he only has 72 CS. Like, where does he get these items from? I guess it's the 31 kill participation, but that's that's amazing. His right click is really fantastic as well. It's kind of nice that he has treads in this case. It really leverages the plus int that he's getting. This is ridiculous. Might see an initiation. There it is. Jump in. Lasso. Madara Great swap. Swap back immediately. Refresh Double though. Lasso, though. Eh, gets him again. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I got another one for you. Refresh this one, Venge. Good <laughs> try. <laughs> Pulls him back, but he's a meaty boy. He's going to walk back into the base and into a snowball. And they're like, no, get back in that battle. And they throw him right back towards Zai. Meanwhile, S4 splits. They take down the tusk. And now PL makes a go onto S4, who's trying to make a go onto the Ventral Spirit. Eventually takes him down. RZZ goes into the base, moving on forward. And now he's on the backside of a bad fight with PL, potentially, in a man mode. He does have the Aegis, however. Will use it. Gets expended. Relax. Barely alive. Has to walk away. Doppelganger trying to make it back to the base. Arteezy actually doesn't stay and get off like yeah. an assassinator or anything. Just gets silenced up and goes back on the outside. And look at that net worth difference. That was a panda, panda attacking... A PL, and the sniper had like, what is this, 6k gold advantage over him, and he was actually fighting competitively. Yeah. Like, PL's actually very strong in a fight. Look at this, Kuroki's easily getting it cleaned up as well. The illusion goes after Ooh, him. Nope, not with at those the low horses. <laughs> Where's the PL right now? I don't Team even know. Team Star Wars over here, they got the force, and they're definitely using it here. Mid lane, there's the jump in dunk. Holy crap. They wipe out everyone. Double buyback comes out from both Relax's PL, same with Kaiser. And it's secret, though, going for these uncontested racks. At least no tier 3 in the way. And they're going to look to go in and try to clear them out. Spams out the illusions, trying to slow him down, reducing Arteezy's mana by a very small amount. But the Rax is definitely going to fall here. Yeah, We've Got a respawn from Tusk. He's going to TP kind of aggressively. They might snowball in for this one. We'll see. Silence on Arteezy. Still chasing BKB now on Quap. He can do a blink ult in one second. If they can get Zy, that'd be pretty good. He's pretty low. S4 getting low as well. 
kill on the wrong side of the fissure. Oh my Whoa, god. Oh, Venge got blown up she and now Secret's gonna chase. Too. Oh, they turn back. This could be the end of the game if they wipe here. And now a desperation snowball to keep Tusk alive. He doesn't have a blink, so he's gonna die from this one here. Travels forward. Shot, 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 shot. Ho ho ha ha. Arteezy is gonna get the kill there, and the racks will go down. They take down both supports. Snow buy back. Tusk out for a minute. Secret now with the upper hand. Get the first real base damage done. Feeling pretty tasty, like it might be a 2-0 series run here. Secret move to the other side, then they already take down the tier 3 in the mid lane. Raxes will be exposed there, but they're going to look to step back, wash their hands, shake it off a bit, and then come back for the final blow. Hmm. Yeah, things are really hard from here on out. Uh, if you just look at Secret's itemization as well, Earthshaker just finished an AC, or uh, a Shiva, sorry, that's going to reduce the attack speed of... Axe of Quap of PL especially. He'll be getting less illusions over time. Things like that. Might see a gank top though. Scream. Oh, the fissure happens to get him. Really, really unlucky there for Quap. He was about to orchid as well. He blinks away. He cannot force. S4 might go back in, but very unlikely. This is just like it's Team Secret. It just seems so hard to get a hold of them. These yeah. four staffs. This this team cooperation right here. Anytime they think they're going to be able to make the jump onto Arteezy or take advantage of Zai as a miss jump in or S4. There's always someone there. How many four staffs is it? It feels like they got like 12. Let me see. They definitely got at least the puppy. They got the Zai. They got the Kuro. And man, they've been really getting the most out of that value. Yeah. Arteezy buying a great item for the situation. He gets a butterfly. He's already got a lot of agility items. So getting another agility item to make his illusions do more damage is really beneficial. So his illusions actually hit decently hard here. The Mjolnir does very little for his illusions. In fact, nothing. But... All the agility items he has after that are great. So the butterfly gives him attack speed. It really leverages his high HP because now PL has to build an MKB, and that's not an item that PL ever wants to build. So uh, kind of a rough spot here for PL. There's almost no way that he can win a fight with Sniper now. And they do a Desperation Smoke, and this is really important. Uh, the Sigil does not get smoked, by the way, so they've got to be careful with that. They can't bring it with. <laughs> and he's got four skill points in that, by the way. It's a huge cooldown. 26 seconds left. Can they kill Puppy first? This would be huge. There's the call. Axe as well. And they're going to even quap ulti this. Couple right clicks. That's going to lose a tusk for them, though. Oh, he small, oh. snowballs in. He's going in. Great stun on top of Arteezy. Another call. They need it in a second here. Here it is. Call going on. Arteezy ending reflection. Damage is getting kind of low, but not enough being done. PL, they're getting so low. Way too much. Oh. AOE damage, and that's going to be good game there. Wow, okay. It was close there for a bit. They make Secret sweat for it, but overall it's it's just Secret Gaming doing what they do. Yeah. Put together a good draft. Really hard to really decide anyone on that team who could be the MVP. Everyone really pulled their own weight. They did their job, yeah. and it was just impressive performance. Props, though, to uh, the London Conspiracy Group, man. They put a funky fresh lineup there with a Tusk and Aggro Tri-Lane get-up. They keep us entertained with all the action there yeah. on the top.